Welcome back. This is Walcott Fine Art and I'm Jason Walcott. Today we're going to talk about blue and all the different kinds of blues that there are in oil paint. So we'll take a look at a few different ones and I'll explain the differences between them and why you might want to try them out. So let's go have some fun with blue. So hello everyone, it's great to be back. And uh, as I said in the introduction, today I'm gonna be talking about blue and different blues in oil paints and kind of the properties of each one. Uh, so these colors I have laid out here, these are the five most common blues that you'll find. Uh, there are others, uh, but like I said, these are the five most common. And they're ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue and cobalt teal so let's take a look at each one so the first one is ultramarine blue and that's this color here and this is one of the oldest uh, blue pigments that there is uh, the original ultramarine comes from lapis lazuli uh, if you want to go ahead and watch my video on the history of blue that talks about where it came from uh, but that's the most common blue that you'll find is ultramarine and uh, depending on how you use color and your co sort of color mixing philosophy, uh, some artists consider ultramarine blue to be warm and some consider it to be a cool blue. Personally, I find ultramarine to be cool uh, because it leans more toward violet um, rather than green and green is, is warmer than violet. So. I tend to think of ultramarine as being cool and sort of icy looking. Uh, so let me uh, show you how it looks when you mix it with white. Now obviously in straight from the tube it's very dark, it looks almost black. But mix some white in with it and it makes this beautiful sort of violety blue, rich deep. Color. So let me add some more blue, make it lighter. So, as you can see, kind of from mixing it with the white, ultramarine blue has has that violety sort of tone to it, and it's a very transparent pigment. So. It's a great color for glazing, and I'll demonstrate that in a second here. Just clean my brush out. So if we put some medium down. Put a little ultramarine blue into that, and make it a real thin, thin it down. So because of that transparent quality it has, it really is an intense blue when you glaze with it. And same thing with phthalo blue too, that's also very rich in tone, which we'll get to next. So you can see how that looks. That's a really beautiful blue color that just glows when you use it in a transparent layer like that. So, and that, like I said, ultramarine blue is the most uh, common blue that you'll find on palettes. It's probably the most well-known. Uh, and because of its kind of violety nature, um, naturally, it's a good blue for using to mix violets. So if you were to mix ultramarine blue with a, uh, like a permanent rose, uh, or a quinacridone magenta or something like that would make a really nice violet color. So moving on to the next one. Uh, our next blue is going to be phthalo blue. And that's this one here, the second one in the row. Now phthalo blue is a modern organic uh, synthetic pigment that was first devised in the 1930s. And the thing with phthalo blue is it's very strong. So a little bit of it goes a very long way. So 
So, but you can see that Thalo Blue is very different from Ultramarine Blue. You know, again, I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera as opposed to looking at it in person, but but you can see when I mix it with white that the Thalo Blue leans much more heavily towards green than the ultramarine does which is leans toward violet and to me that greenish you know cast that phthalo blue has makes it warmer because it looks like tropical oceans and so phthalo blue is a great warm blue uh, i think uh, it's going to make a really nice it's going to mix really nice greens if you mix it with yellow um and it's, it's great for uh, like tropical ocean scenes, uh, warm summer skies, uh, things like that, because it's it doesn't have that coldness that ultramarine has. Uh, and but again, thalo is a wonderful, wonderful color for glazing because just like ultramarine, it's very transparent. So if you take a little bit of it and mix it with some of the glazing medium, You'll see. You can see it's very strong and very intense. So, so you can see that's very. See, it's just not. And my camera is not picking up the the warmth of it, but you can see it's very intense uh, in terms of its like depth when you use it transparently like that so that is phthalo blue now phthalo blue and ultramarine blue are going to be your most two common blues that you'll find uh, they're relatively inexpensive so they make great blues for uh, artists who are looking to you know use more low-cost uh, colors um, you can get artist quality oil paints in both those colors for you know very reasonable prices now the third most common blue that you're going to find is going to be cobalt and uh, you'll find cobalt uh, is used by a lot of watercolor artists uh, as well as oil painters uh, now cobalt resembles this is cobalt blue here now if I don't know if you can see on camera but it's lighter when it's straight out of the tube it's lighter than ultramarine or thalo blue and it looks it looks blue rather than blackish um, and that's the natural color of the pigment there's no white mixed in with it at all these are all pure color straight from the single pigment color straight from the tube and cobalt blue is kind of a neutral blue it's a very interesting color um, and one of the things that makes it unique compared to the first two blues we looked at is is it's relatively uh, opaque, so you can't really use it as a glazing color. It's meant more for mixing with white. Um, it's a good landscape blue uh, for making like distant mountains, like the way distant mountains look blue if you're using atmospheric perspective. Uh, and it resent when you mix it with white, it kind of resembles ultramarine a little bit. But it doesn't have the real violety look that ultramarine has. It really is a neutral, neutral blue that seems to lean neither toward green or toward violet. It's right in the middle, um, and that's what I like about cobalt blue. It's 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 a really nice color. Uh, it is more of an expensive color, um, you know, because cobalt blue is a heavy metal pigment, which uh, they tend to be more expensive. Um, but it is it is a nice color it's a color that came along um, in the 19th century uh, and you know a lot of the impressionists used cobalt blue uh, but it, again that opaqueness that natural opaqueness that it has uh, gives it a very interesting quality so if you want to experiment with cobalt blue check it out because it's a it's a nice it's a real nice color okay so that brings us to uh, the last two colors you see here which are going to be less common. Now, the first one is cerulean blue, which you can see uh, is lighter and a little more greenish than some of these blues here. 
Um, and again, that's not mixed with any white. It comes straight out uh, from the tube as a single pigment color, uh, a lighter, more opaque blue. And just like cobalt, cerulean blue is opaque. So um, it's not a color that's generally used for glazing, although you could thin it down enough probably to do it, but it won't have the same transparent color you know, qualities as like ultramarine or thalo blue. Uh, but cerulean blue uh, is a nice color. Uh, again, it's sort of a mid-tone sort of greenish blue. I wouldn't quite call it a turquoise, but it's... Uh, it makes a nice uh, sky color when you mix it with white because it has a little bit of a natural sort of a dullness to it uh, that makes it uh, it's not as strong of a tinter as some of the other blues but cerulean blue is it is a good sky color and again that was a color that was popular with the uh, impressionists and it's a variant of cobalt blue um, so and again you can see there it's it's a little bit more opaque and then finally the last blue that I have out here is this cobalt teal. Now, one of the hardest, if not the hardest colors to mix from other pigments is a good, clean, bright turquoise. Uh, you know, you can mix violet, you can even mix red, um, but other than maybe yellow, which would be the other one, a really good, clean, bright turquoise is almost impossible to mix from other colors. So I recommend having, uh, if you want to use uh, turquoise in any of your paintings, I do recommend, uh, you know, at least a small tube of this cobalt teal. And it's it's this really beautiful, rich uh, turquoise color. And it's, it's, it's wonderful to use for, uh, for um, like tropical water and tropical seascapes and things like that. And when you mix it with a little white, it just has that wonderful, you know, blue-green color that makes it great for waters and, you know, tropical fish, scenes like that. Um, other things, sometimes turquoise is good for landscapes. Um, if you, they can, it can help warm up shadows uh, and yet remain cool uh, and give the shadows a little bit of interest. Uh, but it's just this beautiful blue green uh, you know shade of teal that's that's really gorgeous and again i don't i don't know if it's showing up on camera quite the same way it looks uh in person uh but if you want a good turquoise then i i highly recommend the cobalt teal i'm using gamblin here uh you don't have to get the big tube you can get the small one uh, but again because it is a cobalt based pigment it will be a little bit more expensive than some of the others. So anyway, so that is a look at uh, your different kind of uh, most common blues. Uh, there is one other, let me just mention it. Uh, and I don't have any here because I, I don't own any tubes of it, but that's uh, Prussian blue. Uh, and Prussian blue um, is an older color that was largely replaced by phthalo blue. Uh, they're nearly the same. The only difference is Prussian blue is a little bit duller. Um, so you could kind of make it by taking phthalo blue and mixing it with just a smidge of black to dull it down slightly and that would get you pretty close to the color of prussian blue um, but again that's it's a color that you can experiment with uh, if you want uh, a great example of prussian blue in use is uh, the blue boy by gainsborough his uh, blue clothing uh, i can tell by the color and the way that's mixed that that's almost certainly prussian blue uh, and you can see it has the same sort of tone as Thalo, but it doesn't have the bright, rich saturation that Thalo Blue does. So anyway, so uh, those are your most common blues that you'll find in oil paint. Uh, I hope that this video was helpful to you and that it illustrates some of the differences uh, between them and that helps you in making a decision as to which ones that you might want to try. So thank you for joining me and I will see you again. Take care. Thanks so much for watching. 
go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss the next video. And why not spread the joy? Be sure to share my videos on your favorite social media. Don't forget to head on over to my website, walcottfineart.com, where you can see my art, read my blog, or when you join my newsletter list, you can win free art. Every month, I'll choose a lucky winner for my email list, and that person will receive a mini original oil painting. There's a chance to win every month, so be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Plus, you'll get my fun newsletter. See you next time!